All right. We had a little bit of a technical issue going on. There were some computer gremlins attacking the wiring. We had to fend them, fight them off, and it happened. I'd like to welcome you guys to the Mad Maker Show, uh, another Mad Maker Show, Tuesdays, every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So my name is Eloy. For those of you guys that are joining us for the first time, I just want to sort of give you an overview of what we do. It's called the Mad Maker Show, and we interview people with different sets of skills and talents that create with their hands uh, the ideas that come to, to mind. And we want to sort of gather as much inspiration from their life story and the things that they make and document it. And so, you know, that's what we're all about. And the madness comes because, frankly, you know, people that sort of veer off the the you know na the straight and narrow path usually tend to have uh eccentricities right um they're, they're they're a little bit off and they could be considered mad but in fact they're not mad at all most of the time we'll find out if that's the case with um our interviewee i jessup in a little bit so um thank you guys for joining us we'll get started in a little bit here but i want to introduce jp right here we go deep breaths hello i'm jp i'm here once again drinking out of my man crafting mug um my youtube channel is jp woodwork no s my website is jp-woodwork.com i'm one fifth of the makers international podcast at found at makers international podcast.com both websites are sponsored by uh Heinel media found out uh, Um I released a video today, uh, Scrolling the Queen. Uh, thanks to everyone who's been sharing it. It's been going around like wildfire, as it seems. So it seems like that's been a big hit, which I'm uh, kind of glad about, considering I stood for 27 poxy bloody hours doing it. Um, apart from that, that's, uh, that's about it. Back to you, Eloy. All right. Thanks, dude. I, I just want to say one one thing before we begin. I I recently had a birthday um, last week or the oh, week. Happy before. birthday! Why, thank you. I just want to do a, a quick shout out to Brian McKnight, Doc, Tracy Keaton. Thank you guys for your support. And I wanted to shout out uh, a few. It's going to be a long list, but um, a bunch of makers got together and totally hooked me up by surprise with a bunch of. Um, tools right uh belt sander disc sander combo was left on my doorstep um and that was steve nealon or steve harneal and um david jones uh portal woodwork uh, and so you know i wanted to shout them out and also a, a, a host of of characters uh uh sent me a lathe right um there's too many to mention but i will mention it in a video video uh, Twydell sent me a helmet or face shield. Uh, Harju is is sending me some tools, special delivery. Un it's been an unbelievable and um, a, a, a special friend sent me um, uh, a curio uh, vinyl cutter thing. I just it's been like winning the lottery. I don't even know how to. It's just unbelievable. Right. I, I felt so good. So I want to thank all of you guys uh, for everything. I mean, I don't even know how to. So I just wanted to put that out there. Band Did you get your band-aids for the scroll saw yet? Uh, I don't want to. I want to get to, to Jesse, but I'm going to have to push back on you for one second. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the specifics, but somebody, they might be watching too because they are. I will give you this clue. There, There is a maker there. That let me know that he, that person let me let me know that you had a bandage or wound on your fingers in your last or previous yeah. video. Would you want me to show you why? I'll, I'll no, no, I don't why. want why because I'm gonna jump the Y and I'm gonna go to the Z and say that you cut your finger on a scroll saw. What well, and on now back, you hold back, on the back of my finger. I don't know what craziness you British people do. <laughs> I don't know how you guys work it. All right. 
I just want to. If you, if you want to think about Aloy. Well, yeah. we could. Well, you, you know, know we'll, we'll, sleep at night. we'll settle our scores um, later, later on. Uh, we've got right. plenty of time for that. So I, I want to welcome I, Jessup, to the show. Thank you so much for, for joining us, Jesse. No, it's my pleasure to be here now that I finally figured out how to use a computer. <laughs> so you, you got a, a, a brand new computer? Recently? Yeah, so I'm out in Joshua Tree right now and um, uh, with actually both my brothers and um, Mike from Modern Builds. And so Ben got a couple of uh, desktop computers for editing. So I haven't set up anything on it yet. I haven't even personalized my desktop. It's very unnerving. <laughs> but, uh, but it's nice to have the big screen to work on for a change. Awesome. Awesome. So I guess we'll start. With, I, I want to start like this. I'll do it sort of, um, I, I mentioned this a lot, Quentin Tarantino style. So we'll go back and forth in timeline, but just to get an over, I just like to do it that way. Um, your, your images that you put out with your builds and you in it, there's always a very, it, it, it feels, and, and correct me, very thought out, um, I don't even know, like balanced, right? Um, you look at the image and you get inspiration because there's you working on something, but you have it in such a way that it's all, and I don't know what you're, can you give us a little bit of, of cause it stands apart, right? How you do that stands apart. Just give us something of that and tell it so that we have like, how the heck do you do that? And what's your mindset and all that? In, in reference to that. Okay. Um, hmm. That's kind of hard to say because I don't think that I necessarily do anything that special. I usually, you know, most of the times if I'm, if I post a picture on Instagram of me in the middle of doing something, it's mainly because I'm like, hmm, I'll bet this looks kind of funny or awkward. Like a lot of my photos are like me sitting on something or holding pieces together with my knees so I can, attach it and and so I just kind of think I'll bet any random person walking by that like peeked over the fence would be like what the heck is going on back there um but as for the way that they're framed or staged it's pretty much that's just whatever condition I was working in <laughs> to start with um yeah I, I don't I don't really know I don't um this might sound a little silly, but I don't like put a whole lot of thought into the photograph itself. It's more just like, I'll bet this looks funny. And if I can get it from the right angle to what I imagine it in my head, then there you go. So, okay. But I, I see that's so <laughs> tough to, to accept that because I see it. I see the pictures and I'm thinking, see, it could be like the thing of the Beatles, right? That people would listen to the Beatles and they imagine that they're saying this, this, and they're they're planning everything, and they were just rocking and rolling, and and yet people, you know, Paul is dead. Paul is dead. Reverse on the record, but um, but seriously, I look at the the pictures and say I'm pushing back, but it's just I I, I got to push a little That's bit. Cool. I want to see Do if it. I could draw a little bit more, maybe. Um, I, it's like it's as if you're drawing from things in popular culture. It's it's. In, in, a, in, a, in a subtle way and framing it uh, so that it's as effective as it can be. I don't know if I'm the only one that, I don't think I'm the only one that, that feels that way. Hmm. Is there a question in there? Uh, I see, because I, I, <laughs> well, I think of myself as not really having any sort of handle on pop culture. Kind of live in a little bubble. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I tend to just, if I think something's interesting, I have it near me, or if I think something looks cool, I have it near me or, you know, within eyesight, but I don't know, like, now I'm really curious to see it through your eyes. Because <laughs> uh, for me, it just uh, feels normal. Berkey says, uh, what Jesse is saying is that she has a, a natural aesthetic flair. Oh, hey, Berkey, <laughs> thanks. Could it be a, see, I, I still can't, so obviously I'm gonna have to 
accept your 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 word you're saying but it's just that it's 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 almost inconceivable for me so you have okay so you have very in certain situations it's like you have the the the, the rule of thirds occurring in, in many ways you're not aware of these things no i mean i try to be in the center because <laughs> <laughs> that, that seems to work out best. <laughs> but, I mean, other than that, um, okay, fair enough. You know, I I really well, they're yeah, very. Effective. I don't know. I just kind of go for it. They're very effective as far as you know uh, the presentation, the the marketing of it. Um, it. It's it's bad to the bone. I like also that um, you you wear one color, one shoe, one color, the other shoe. And I've always wanted to ask, well, well, why, why, why? It's, it's such a silly thing, but for me to ask, but why? Because I'm curious. You know, it started with socks. Um, I, I would just buy like a bag of socks, right? And there's like three different colors, and they all are interchangeable. It doesn't matter. And I'm like, hmm, I don't have to match my socks. And <laughs> I mean, this was years and years ago. This was probably like 20 years ago. And I was like, I felt like it was the secret that I had. Like, you don't know, but underneath my shoes, my socks don't match. And for some reason that made me feel really cool. It doesn't take much. Um, but then it wasn't until I started working. I worked in a restaurant um, for, uh, I worked in the same restaurant actually for 13 years. And um, so, you know, our costume is all black, but we can basically wear whatever kind of shoes we want. And I was like, well, if I buy two pairs at a time, then, you know, I know I'm going to wear through them fast. And I can, then, hey, I could mismatch them. And so it's just kind of like, why not? Nice. Why, why would I match when I don't have to? And uh, yeah, and now it's become such a thing because I, I forget about it. And so when I made my first couple of videos, it, it didn't even cross my mind that, you know, that's not a thing that people do. And, um, but it's, it's come to the point where now if I post a picture on Instagram, people will be like, your shoes match, what's going on? And so it's now become this whole thing where if, I, if my shoes match, then people get upset with me. <laughs> so I have to buy two pairs of every shoe I get. <laughs> See, that's, that's kind of where, where the, the reason I, I started with those questions because the, those little things that people see you know with what you present because we we have a a, situ a special situation with this community of makers where it's not just makers it's makers plus video or makers plus mm -hmm. you know photography instagram whatever the case and um facebook and all the rest and it, it, it so it's funny patrick from patrick's workshop said man it's it's weird but woodworking is like 90 percent computer and 10 percent woodworking man you know and i found that so humorous that that i always remember that um there so the the marketing of things that that one creates is to me without that it's like you know nobody sees it so what does it matter so um you you do that very well any any other thoughts on that in general? Um, honestly, I I I don't. Yeah, I sound like such a dork or a jerk. I don't know, one of the two. But I don't put a whole lot of thought into what I do because everything is still so new to me. To the point where, you know, if I'm going to build something, even something that in the end I'm like, oh, that was really simple. I can't think it through because that's just not how my brain works. I, I don't sketch, I don't model, I don't do anything of that. I just kind of have a loose picture in my mind and I try and make that happen. Um, right. And it doesn't always work, it, you know? Sometimes it's just like me in tears on the floor for like an hour until I can pick myself back up and keep going. But um, but uh, I, I'm, I think I'm getting better at simplifying because I want to make things like really cool, but I don't know how to do that yet. So I just make simple things. And, um, I, you know, that's, that's just kind of how I like to do things, I guess, because it's, it just keeps pushing me forward and, and I have a momentum problem. So I really have to push and push. And, um, if I try and take too long to think it all the way through, 
I'll never get anything done. Like right. quite honestly. Yeah. If you, if you so think I just of have all, to go for it. Yeah. Yeah. If you think of all the obstacles and things one has to, it becomes such a, like a mountain that you're like, Oh, mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. I totally, I totally agree. Um, so tell us a little bit about, um, the things that you create, the pieces that you create. I, I like the, see, I have my perception, right? We all have our perception. So I'm seeing this and I could swear, I'm not going to let that go. I totally see that you think about it consciously. I'm sorry, but whatever, right? But because I'm going to run into this you. again. <laughs> We're going to run into this again with this next question. And it's like, so when you build things, my perception is, so you'll have certain items and it's like brand new, like from brand new eyes, right? A brand new, fresh fresh mind and you grab the things and you say, okay, we're going to build from this. We're going to make a chair or that lamp, you know, we're going to make a, a stool and we're going to draw these things together. And it's, to me, it's that, 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 that very, um, uncluttered. It feels un like uncluttered. Like I'm starting from, from a blank canvas and I'm gathering it all. And then you're, you're videoing as well. Um, I see this, you know, so I, I see intent and I see yet you're, you're doing it simple. Can you give us a little bit about the items that you answer that answer that? I know it's so freaking random that who can answer that question? Could you answer that? I don't think I could. Uh, we'll, we'll pick it apart little by little and see what happens. Okay. Um, okay. So for instance, the last thing that I built was a, a bench. I built a bench out of logs and um, it, the, the project came about because um, I had a talk with Carolina Shoe Company and they wanted to sponsor a video and send me some boots, which was awesome. They sent me two pairs so I could mismatch because they're amazing. Um, so the whole project came about because I was thinking, you know, I never wear boots. These are really heavy duty. I should do something bigger than be in a, you know, be in my little shed with white walls and like using a circular saw. I need to do something big. What's what's the biggest thing I could do? Like, well, I could use a chainsaw, I guess. Like that seems like a, a type of thing you would wear boots to do. Um, so the project came about because I wanted to wear boots and wear and use a chainsaw. And then the idea, I, I had so many ideas about how I wanted to make this thing, which I didn't want to make a bench because I'm like, that's boring. Um, but then I ended up making a bench because that turns out that's the only thing I knew how to do. <laughs> but um, so like that, that one, I, I actually kind of liked it because I didn't even have a project in mind when I started cutting up logs. Just kind of what what kind of good things can I get out of this? And they're also, um, so it's a black walnut tree that was in my parents' backyard. I mean, we had tree forts in that tree over the past 30 years. And, uh, and so for a number of reasons, we had to cut it down. We milled it um, on a Lucas mill in my parents' backyard. So we have some nice slabs. And then we had a bunch of smaller logs, which turns out had a bunch of termites in it. Um, but that's okay, it just gave it character. So, so there's one instance where I didn't have any project in mind and just materials. And um, I feel like if I, if I think I could use anything for my next build, I will always go back to using plywood because it's the easiest thing to use as a beginner. It's so flat and straight. And all I really want to do is make plywood boxes forever because that's like the thing that I'm almost really good at. <laughs> like those edges meet up so close, so close to being right. Um, but I, I, I'm trying, there are a couple of things I made like, like the silly phone receiver. Um, you know, I built a little stand that held my phone with one of the old school uh, um, headpieces. And, uh, more of I had never used a jigsaw before and so I had scrap plywood I'm like well I could just start cutting with it but I think it'd be a better idea if I just tried to make something immediately and see how it see how it goes hey, can I, can I thought, well if I'm gonna do it I may as well video can I interject with that that's, yeah, a, per that's a perfect example the phone 
to hold the phone mm -hmm. with that. See, here's my problem with this whole thing um, that, well, it's not a problem, just okay. for the question that, so you're taking something and remind, so it's almost, it's almost like you're adding a, a, a bit of, 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 it's artistic, sculpture-like, minimalist, and yet there's all these things that I'm seeing I don't know. Um, that's a perfect example. It, it draws one's mind to think of a memory from the past and yet recreated. Whatever. I, I just wanted to state that. Continue. No, that's. I, I think that's great. I actually, um, I've always wanted one of those those you know handheld headsets for the phone. I I remember my oldest brother when he got his. I think was maybe his first cell phone. And so this was probably like 20 plus years ago. And he had one of those headsets and he'd stick his phone in his pocket and talk and walk around the street and talking on it. And I thought that was just the most amazing thing. And, um, you know, flash forward to now where it's like, who wants to hold this next to their face and talk to it? It's so uncomfortable. Um, but then it's actually kind of funny because I hate talking on the phone anyways. <laughs> but it, it just, for me, it brings back memories to when you when you stood in the kitchen and talked on the phone and you could walk like a, practically a mile in any direction because the freaking cord is so long. But you're like talking like this on the phone is childhood, right? For me, that's, that's childhood. I remember that. And, and uh I don't know, it's not be funny, but you know, it's such a silly thing that's so impractical, who needs it? And I was like, well, it would be funny if it like sat on a desk as if it were an actual phone. And I thought, well, you know, why can't it? Why not, right? Yeah. So I, I don't know, I, I feel like I just, whatever is interesting to me, I'll be like, here you go. I hope you enjoy it too, because I don't really have a good gauge of what people like, but I know yeah. what I like. And um, and I, I tend to think like in black and white, just like, I like this, I don't like this. I guess I'll pick the thing I like. All right, so um, so JP just mentioned that there's a, a load of questions. So we are gonna go to you guys' questions in just a second. But before I do that, because usually what will end up, they ask so, so, so many good questions and they steal all my, my my questions but <laughs> i could take thunder <laughs> totally and, and and i could get lost in in one direction and by the time i find my way back home it's like you know it's all it's all said and done um i i do want to ask can you give us a before we go to the questions guys out there um can you give us a little bit about um growing up family history uh your just a little bit of that so that we can have placement and 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 folks can can have a a better um, you know, better understanding of, of where you come from and, and all that anecdotes in, in a concise, it doesn't have to be, but like just a little bit, a little taste so that we know. Okay. So the highlights, um, I'm the youngest of four children. We were all homeschooled. Uh, we grew up in just North of Santa Barbara, California. Um, and my, my mom was our teacher growing up and my mom, both of my parents are very creative and just, you know, whatever it is like, Hey, I could probably do that. And, uh, like memories of childhood include a lot of my mom just ha having a bunch of things and be like, let's make something out of this. Like our, our little doll houses, all of the furniture was made out of little scraps of wood that she would sometimes cut on the band times, like a little just a little rectangle. She'd paint it white and draw a refrigerator front on it. Like, like my mom just always saw what something could be rather than what it was. So that was childhood. Um, I uh, oh, I played uh, classical violin um, up until I was eighteen, and then you know tendon or tendonitis and carpal tunnel and all that good stuff. But uh, so dreams of being a concert violinist went out the door. Um, I was a librarian for 11 years. I worked in a sushi restaurant for 13 years. I used to teach special education. I've done production management for symphonies. I, um, I worked a summer at a lumber mill and now I build things on the internet. So 
I think awesome. that's as concise as I can be. V very good. All the high um, points. Very good. So before I, I we, we, we go to JP and, and the audience out there, um, also, it's funny, the homeschool thing, uh, also Bobby Duke was homeschooled, and so was... Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, we interviewed him. He was our second uh, guest interview, um, okay. and he mentioned, and so was Rebecca DeGroote. Um, yes. Yeah, so those two, I just wanted to say, and JP, take it away. Sorry for the... Okay, uh, before I get to the questions, I'll quickly have a quick rundown of who's over in the chat. Um, right, we've got Jim Bushiers, Katie Dotson, Harry's Woodshop, Mr. Peter Brown, um, Julia hey. Martinez, uh, Jay Thompson, man crafting, uh, Mike Pickett, MJ Printing, Mark Lindsay, Ken McCrory, Be Happy Woodworking, uh, Peter Brown again. Um, <laughs> He really likes this one. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Berkey's over there. OJ's Woodworking Crafts, uh, Harnell Media. Uh, let's keep going. Tim Webster, Bobby Duke, Sterling Davis, uh, Tom Spillaney. This, I think that's it. I've scrolled quite a way back. Right, let's uh, let's get down to the bottom. Oh, Bales. Yep, yeah, he's just turned up as well. So I'm not sure what one of the bales, but one of them's a troublemaker, so we've got to be careful with him. Right. Uh, first question is going to come from Berkey. So I don't know if he's right, winding. Me up. I don't know if he's winding me up. The answer this. is bacon. <laughs> Whatever it is, the answer, yeah, the answer is bacon. Is bacon. Right. Um, has a dog ever jumped on your lap and smeared coyote poop all over you? Coyote poop? No. I feel like that's really specific. I have had a dog drop a cat poo in my lap. So what about when you went to visit yeah, him? Pretty close. <laughs> Do you think that was really coyote? I think that was not coyote. Because he, he actually I think me. that he, was he, in, cow. he inboxed me on Facebook to make sure I think sure that was cow. To that was sure. a, that was a total misdirect. <laughs> to make sure I actually I think answered the question that. is <laughs> I, I think the actual question, have you ever taken a road trip with a poo-smeared dog on your lap? <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> and I would do it again in a heartbeat. I mean, come on, Berkey and Fiona, please. Best day ever. <laughs> okay, <dokie. laughs> Right. Um, three dots, uh, no, three dot spoons. Um would like to know, what do you think about while you are creating? Oh, hmm. Well, there are three things that I do while I'm working. One is listen to podcasts, which if there's any thinking involved, I can't listen to podcasts because I just can't think and hear voices at the same time. So if I'm making measurements, I have to turn off all voices. Um, Two is listening to music, but I end up singing along and then it just looks weird in the video. And three is I try to think about as little as possible. Just, just it's almost just like making, not even an open mind, but an empty mind to just be looking at whatever I'm doing and trying to think about not two steps ahead, but just what's the next step in this process. Um, because I'm that person who always makes something where the last screw that goes in is on the inside and you can't get the drill in there. Like I'm that person. So I'm trying to just think, okay, if I do this, then what? And I can really only hold like half of a thought in my brain at any given time. So I try not to think about anything at all. Fair dues, fair dues. Um, question from <laughs> Sterling Davis. Where does your wisdom hey, come Sterling. from? Uh, yeah, he said, where does your wisdom come from? You seem like such an odd soul, but uh, you, you're <laughs> fun and witty. But you're fun and witty. Where does it come from? Um, I think I was actually born an old lady. I, I'm like, I'm Benjamin Buttoning, basically. I was, I was a, I was a very grown up child. <laughs> and I took, a, I, you know, I took offense to, uh, adults talking down to me and I always just wanted to do everything myself and um, so I, I was really I was a terrible child because I, I started correcting people's grammar at a very young age 
Um, I, I don't know about wisdom, but I would say that I have, I've had a lot of experiences in life where if I just take a step back, I go, oh, I can really clearly see how I got myself into this situation. And had I just thought about it a little bit, I wouldn't be here now. So I, I really try and just, it's funny because when it comes to building, I'm the total opposite because I just go for it. But everything else, I'm like, okay, let, let me think for a second here. Hmm. And plus working in the service industry, I worked in the service industry for 16 years and um, I met a lot of people and I've seen just about every type of person you could ever hope or not hope to see. And through my years at working at the restaurant, one of my games I would play is, it doesn't matter how horrible the customer is, by the end of their meal, they will be thanking me, they'll be like giving me presents, they'll be hugging me, like it doesn't matter who it is. Like I, I, know, I know you, I can figure this out. It's all a puzzle. So I'm just a people watcher. That's that's just what I do. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, there's a question from OJ's uh, Woodcrafts. Um, he says he has to ask, what is your favorite tool and favorite project? Ooh, hmm. Favorite tool. That's that's a that's a hard question. I'll I'll go with favorite project first. Um, the favorite, my so my favorite project that I made for a video was um, a little rolling table cart that the top comes off and it's a separate table and then the bottom rolls, and that is it. Like it's not even it doesn't look that great and and it's not super interesting, but for me personally to figure out how the pieces fit together, like to make something that comes apart and is still two separate entities, like that was huge for me. And I don't care if it's even my worst video ever. I don't care. I am so proud of that build because that like, it's something that I always thought about, but I'm like, oh, building something that fits together and then pulls apart. That's impossible. But um, yeah, I, I made that. And that was the first, that was the first iteration too. There was no, there was nothing before that. I just, it took me a really long time and I just, figured it out each step as I went, okay, I think this goes and this goes. And and uh, so yeah, that is by far my favorite project. Um, as for favorite tool. That would be me. That's a really good question. <laughs> You're not a tool, you dope. Berkey says that that your favorite <laughs> tool is, is yeah. Jamie Page. Yeah, that's I mean, what I really, that's what I said it. There's no respect. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah you know sometimes when people are like what's your favorite tool like my my immediate answer is always to say Ben um because it's funny to make fun of my big brother who's very successful I usually tell people he's my little brother and I taught him everything he knows uh, so that's fun but um I, I think that like I know this is kind of an odd one because I don't know if they mean hand tools or power tools or what but I have this little pocket knife. It's a Gerber and like it just fits a utility blade. And it's the only thing that like I carry with me on a daily basis. And I use it a hundred times per day. And it's probably my favorite random tool that I've ever had. Cause I've never, I've always wanted to carry a pocket knife. I want to be a person who carries a pocket knife. Um, but it's just never happened until, until now. Awesome. So, that is yeah, very... I'm going to say my, Ger my Gerber pocket knife. Yes. We, that is very important, a knife. And by the way, I just uh, want to say, JP and everybody, if you can't produce, and all you guys out there, a knife at this very moment, no matter what, and I've been working um, outside, if you can't oh, produce some sort of knife, immediately. Mine's out in the shop. I left it out there. You suck. I know. This is a multi-tool, oh, but boo. I got something with me. I left it out there. That works. I, I would I would produce my knife, but it's over there, and I'm literally not wearing pants right now. So <laughs> no. So what we do is usually... I showered. Oh, well, hey, look. Yeah, I'd have to like shimmy this way. Nah, that's a, that's a, that's an exclusive. Um, but, but 
we I always, always keep them. one sitting on my laptop but it's right. 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 yeah, there's safety glasses there's a knife deodorant yeah i've got all the good stuff right over there just oh, you know man. i showered to be on camera i'm so clean except for the paint which i didn't know was there but my <laughs> hair is clean i just you know didn't get to the rest of it <laughs> All right, we just we just went down down downhill right with this conversation. <laughs> Continue, JP. Uh, I'm shocked. I'm sorry. I'm sh I'm sorry. I'm shocked that JP, <laughs> knowing that we do because we do this randomly on Hangouts, we'll have a bunch of makers and we'll say, you know what, you're not a maker if you don't have this, and if they don't have produce that whatever the the, the item is, you know, it's like it's like a little a shaming thing. I like uh, that. I, I I have my 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 first Ticonderoga giant pencil. Hey, Do you guys okay. ever use these? These are the best. These are the best. Boom. They're huge. Look at the weathering on that one. Choppy. <laughs> it's a good one. You've been chewing on it, I can tell. You, look at this. <laughs> you see this pen here? Oh, look at that. This was made especially for me by JP. Look at that. Psychedelic. I told it him. It looks good enough to eat. To eat? Doesn't it look like candy? Yeah, it looks. It looks delicious. I said, give do something psychedelic, and look at that. Anyways, we're off top topic. Continue, JP. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, well, it's not really much point in asking Jake Thompson's question now because you kind of asked, answered it in the last one. But speaking of Jake, he's got a HVLP gun review uh, on his. Um, Channel you should look at and check out. It's basically a Harbor Freight gun, uh, lacquer spray gun. Okay. You should go and check out. But well, uh, yeah, sp speaking of Jake, Eloy's kind of uh, obsessed with his workshops. It's like an airplane hanger. Um, and he's, uh, he likes to see if someone's got a bigger shop than him. So, how big is your shop? <laughs> um, that depends on where I am. So, my, my, my official shop. I have a little solar shed in my parents' backyard. My my brother built it for me. It's a tough shed and it is, okay, what is it? I think it's 16 by 12, maybe something like that. It's, uh, it's just big enough to do everything except big furniture. <laughs> Like if I wanted to cut down a sheet of plywood, I have to open both doors and then just run it in one side and straight out the other. But um, <laughs> it's it's great for me because it's just, it's very compact. I like small spaces because I will fill up every corner with things. So the smaller the space, the less excess I have. And like right now, so at this tree in Joshua, uh, or the tree in Joshua house, wow. The house in Joshua tree, that's it. Um, we do a lot of work on the patio in the back and there are four of us here making videos So we're all like kind of walking around each other I think in everyone's videos you can see shadows going around the perimeter and then we have a space in the living room where we actually We made a mock photo studio So we put in a lighter colored floor because the floor is really dark and we put in a false wall because we're not allowed to paint the walls And this is not a good color. This is a gross color. So we put up a fake white wall and uh, we put in a light colored floor. And so now we have this half of a room that we do finish photos in or any sort of inside building that we need to get done. Um, and so, I mean, this is just like a regular house. There's no shop space, just there's a, there's a walkway through the garage, which is full of tools and material. And we just do things on the, on the patio right now, on the driveway, I mean, yeah, so. Mm. It's like it's a driveway cars. What's mm. the thinking behind just to to interject for for a moment? What's the thinking behind? I mean, I could say the obvious thing, but what's the thinking behind with the um, using the the, the 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 I mean, you want a clean you know background, but there's people that don't bother with that, and they'll shoot mm -hmm. in whatever crazy mess that they're in. But it does. I, there's different styles, but that tends to distract a bunch uh, you know a lot of people when there's so much going on and when you have such a, a clean background and it's just you with the tool and the project the focus is like honed it i mean is that the thinking for for you for 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 your family and is that the thinking 
Yeah, so that that's the that's the general idea. Is just um, it's like the same thing with a with a with a painting or a photograph. You like whatever you look at, you want it to draw your eyes to the the focal point, whether it's in the center or in the side. You know, sometimes our photographs are offset, but it doesn't matter because wherever you start looking at the photo, it brings you to the object because there's nothing to distract you, and like. Um, so that's that. That's like the main reason why we try and shoot the videos the way that we do. Um, since we've been doing a lot of things in different locations now, um, that's been hard to maintain. But for the most part, we try and keep just that really blank wall. We work on a tabletop or on the floor with nothing else in sight, usually except the things that we're immediately using. And uh, and the same goes for like the the glamour shots, you know, um, like. I know that both Ben and I get really distracted if there's like a photograph of something made out of wood on a wood table in a wood shop where there's wood behind and it just, everything gets kind of like brown and honey colored and it just kind of meshes all together. And uh, to have that white background where all you're looking at is the thing that you're supposed to be seeing. And then it gives you more opportunity to see detail or you know your eyes wander around it and think, well, what does it look like from this side? Swipe look at the next picture, you know? So I think it's more just keeping an, an uncluttered, uncluttered eye light, um, eye line. Sorry, I'm like pulling a hair out of my shirt here. I'm all a mess. Okay, so, I'm good, I'm fine. So let me ask you this then. So, okay, so that's great information there. And uh, as far as the thinking, so I'll ask you the inverse. How, what, how, how do you feel about instead of white like a room that's completely devoid of, of it's just black the walls are black and then the lighting is what what folks what, how do you feel about that i like that um i actually um <laughs> so when when ben was doing his big project at um in venice california for for the great shoe store um, so I was helping him with that, and one day I was just ripping down a, a bunch of sheets of plywood, just, um, well, dimensions don't matter. But the point was, I was doing it in the uh, late afternoon into early evening, and it was starting to get dark, and I was like, I've got three sheets left, like, I can I can make this happen. And so um, I ended up putting on a little a little mole lamp, and so it's like, it's dark outside, but I took a video of myself, um, which no one will ever see because don't tell anyone that I did this, but I literally was with my circular saw in the dark and all that I had was my mole lamp just pointing right where the line was. And so I watched the video back and I'm like, that looks really freaking cool. Like, I like the way that looks. But I will say that that in itself, what you're doing is you're creating like this dramatic event instead of this is me cutting with a saw. Like, I almost think that what I'm doing should not even be interesting. It's more like, okay, yeah, saw next. It's just like watching instructions live instead of being like, look at the saw with the sawdust. I like that, but I feel like that's a different effect than what I go for. And when someday when I make really, really cool videos, <laughs> I'm totally gonna do that. But right now I'm just like, let's stick to the simple stuff because I have a hard enough time pushing those videos out anyways. Well, would you? But yeah. Would you, so that's very interesting. So you, you, you dig, that. so would you in the future, you know, when you get to that point that you want to explore that would, would you do a little bit of, how would you do that? Would you do a little bit of both or would you decide going in a certain direction and sticking with, I mean, what would you, what would you do? Would you say, okay, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, because, um, you know, everybody has their periods of, of this is the, the, the blue period, Picasso, the and channels seem to have that, you know, where they have a timeline of I was here, I was doing it like this, and then they have this improvement or this change just for the simple fact of I want to change it up and make it more artistic or make it, would you com combine those things, like a uh, white cl clear background with a little bit of a drama or outside stuff? Or what would you do? I think that... Um I would rather just say, I'm gonna go all out on this video and do something different rather than try and mix it up because I feel like I, I would be confused by it. Like, what is what is my 
what is my overarching theme? Usually I don't have an overarching theme, but if I'm throwing too much in, then I feel like I, I get myself confused. Um, I can't really say what the evolution of my channel is going to be at this point because I feel like I'm, I still haven't even gotten my momentum. It's been like two years and I'm like, I don't, I still don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I feel like the format that I'm using right now for the type of videos that I make, that's, I, I like it. It's, it's simple, it's fast, it's easy. It's not really, like you can get the idea of what I'm doing basically. You know, it's not super in depth, but you can see every step. If I were to change that up, I would do a different style video. You know, I'd go for more dramatic or, you know, something a little little more interesting than just like these static sh shots of me this way and using the chop saw and using the chop saw again and then sanding, you know. So I, I think that if I'm gonna do something different, I'm just gonna go all out and do something completely different. And and how in, how important would you say so you do a little bit of it as you're going through the project and stuff. Uh, so you know how we all have our stories and a lot of people always in conversation tell me, and I, I totally feel that we all have stories that are interesting. Our lives are pretty, it, it, some people don't see it, you know, but our lives are pretty interesting. Um, nor, normal stuff could be very interesting, especially how you, you uh, deliver it, offer it up. Um, so would you explore telling the story more within the video uh, in the future? Like, so you, you'll have your project, but then you'll have some random situation occurring. Have, have you ever thought of that type? Not that I'm saying for you to do it. I'm just curious to see what your responses would be to those, to those ideas. Yeah, I feel like there's not really a lot of story to the things that I build um, right now. Uh, so it, I, if I have something I feel that is interesting, because I could go on camera for every video and be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing the thing and I cut the thing and ta-da. Um, but I, I don't find that particularly interesting to me. Like I want something more. If you're gonna be there, what are you saying? Like, are you, are you there for a point or a purpose or or just to connect, connecting is good. That's something I'm trying to do more of because I actually hate being on camera. And I always end up with like 15 minutes of me talking on camera and you know, like one minute and 27 seconds is all that is usable. Mostly because I make a lot of weird faces when I talk, I, I noticed this. Um, so I think that, uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm just kind of, figure it out as I no, go. Don't worry about it. I'll but make a I, I think that as well to, to, and I am when I don't. <laughs> oh no, no. I, well, you, you can't help it though. Your face is good. <laughs> oh, well no no it's, I'm not well but for goodness sakes I'm not saying do it, you know, like hey you gotta do it. I'm just saying to see what what pops, you know, out of her 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 mind, you know, what, what she thinks of it. Don't do it or do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus JP. Because I, no, also, I also I also ask absolutely. him that What's that? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, and and I've I've thought about it too because you know I feel like there's on on some people's projects I'm always like oh well where did that come from how did that come about but you know and you want to know it, or you want to just hear them say something about whatever it is that they're doing and yeah. so I think about that from time to time but also I'm like eh it's a plywood box how much more can I say about it you know it, except for like in voiceover just be like, and I added these copper pipes because why not, you know? There's not really like a story yeah. there. There's just enough for me to mention it and then move on with my life. Yeah. But um, I, I, have, I, have, I have thought about that. If I ever come up with something that I actually feel has a story, you know, other than just this used to be wood and now it's wood made into a table, then, you know, I'll go with that. And I'll credit you. <laughs> like my inspiration was Eloy. <laughs> Thank you. Get on it quickly, quickly. You're <laughs> um, but on the same, on the flip side of that, though, not to leave this part, um, you know, void. Also, by because everybody's got, you know, it's 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 a wor a world of their own. But on the flip side of what we just talked about, there's also the situation that just by the sheer fact of you, um, in social media photographs, locations where you're at, 
a story is being formed regardless of, you know, um, and those voids of, oh, well, why are you standing on top of a, a mountain or something? Or why is it, you know, that you're like sort of all crammed into a, a space holding up by your elbow and your, your leg? Why is, and those stories, people fill in the blanks in their mind. Oh, they're probably fixing this and this and that. Oh, it's probably because, and so a story occurs even though one does not uh, direct it, you know, verbally. What do you think? Yeah, and that that's a great point because I feel like the photos that I post on Instagram that have to do with me in the middle of doing something or or even when I'm traveling between places and I, you know, when I'm on my road trips and I'm stopped at an abandoned building, um, I feel like those are those are those little moments where they don't necessarily have anything to do with the project as a whole, like st you know, start, steps, finish, end. Um, where it's just like me, just I spent so many hours sanding those logs, trying to get the tops of them to be kind of in a way that meets up with the not flat board that sits atop them. But I sanded forever until finally I was like, two days I, I sanded for maybe six hours each day, just going back and forth and back and forth because I'm literally that bad at making a straight cut. Um, and so finally I was like, you know what? I'm just posting this picture on Instagram because this is the part that's not gonna be in the video where I talk about how much I sanded and sanded and, and you only need to show a couple seconds. They get the point you sanded. But yet in my head, again, I'm thinking like looking at from the outside perspective, I'm like sitting on the work table. I'm, I'm holding the log still with my legs so that I could stand the top of it. And that was, that was my day. I mean, I was just covered in, in sawdust and it was great. <laughs> it was awesome. So muted, Yeah, I just realized that. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so wait a second. So you're saying you're, let me get this straight that that you enjoy the process of sanding? See, I'm the weirdo, right? I like sanding and you, I like painting. You and Mark Lindsay. I don't know if you know Mark Lindsay, and, but uh, he's like, it's cathartic, he says. Also, um, Matthew Lovell, he loves sanding. We bonded over our mutual admiration Jacobson. of the process of sanding. And Carl too, well, he is a weirdo, that makes sense. It just yeah. sickens me. <laughs> I, I, I kind of like it. It's like, it's that idea of, you know, how they say stacking BBs, like but you're that person who will just sit there and stack BBs in a pile, even though there's no point to it. I'm totally that person. I would love to stack BBs all day long, but I'll stand instead. That will work too. Okay. So I'm going to ask you, unless I have some questions. JP, is there anything that folks yeah, are asking? In the there's a couple more questions. Okay, I'm going to ask one question, and then because I will forget and mess it all up, um, and then we'll go to that. So, Jess, the question yeah. is: What tools are you? Would you be interested in, or are you already that we haven't seen? Uh, scroll saw work, uh, lathe. Uh, are you even interested in these things? Or tell me, tell me what what are your thoughts there? And Anna, Anna so, B, thank you so much, Anna. Thank you very much. Anna Concrete. Sorry, Jesse, go ahead. Uh, let's see. No, that's okay. Um, I So I have an interest in absolutely every tool because not that I'm like, I'm going to master all the tools. No, I just want to know. I just want to try everything out once. Um, I've only used a lathe one time and that was actually i was on a road trip i was near las vegas and bill Volsi's like wait you're gonna be in las vegas you have to come visit and i was like done so i went and hung out with him and he's like what you've never used a lathe you're going to use a lathe and so i did just you know on my road trip stopped to see one of one of the the many wonderful people in this community and i used a lathe for the first time and it was awesome. My problem with the lathe though, is that I really just want to stand there again with a sanding problem. I just want to stand there and like whittle it down to absolutely nothing because it's so relaxing. Oh my gosh, I love it. But um, I don't have a lathe, so so no no lathing in the, in the near future at least. Um, but uh, 
as for a tool that I want, I mean, I want all the tools because I'm greedy, but uh, <laughs> I, so yes, I do actually want a scroll saw, which I don't have. I did it's get a awesome. bandsaw finally, and I haven't used it, even my bandsaw yet. Um, I, just I haven't have... used a bandsaw in like more than 20 years. <laughs> The, the the scroll saw is awesome. It, it really and it, it's it's an awesome tool. I'm telling you, it's bad to the bone. So just putting that out there. Some Southern Ginger, thank you so much, dude. Hey, if you could put their their links, JP, please. Oh. So scroll saw, you want? I want, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I want all the tools. I'm excited. I have, well, actually we've had a welder for a while, but I didn't have any gloves or a jacket or anything that I, I could wear. Cause you know, it's hard to find that sort of thing for me, but actually, um, Lincoln electric now makes gloves for tiny hands. So I'm going to try my hand at a welder. Um, so it's it's hard for me to think of things outside of what I use because everything everything I need for the type of projects I make yes. I have because they're so you know like they're so basic where I don't even think I have this great um, battery powered uh, Brad nailer and it's you know they're awesome for just tacking things together while you're you know fitting everything else and I forget to use it because it's just like it's not one of my my three go to tools. So I totally forget that it's there. Um, so I'm I'm trying to incorporate more. We'll see how that goes. Cause I'm also trying to actually keep it pretty lean, just because, um, you know, I want to. I'm I'm talking to beginners here. Like, I might do something silly, like use my feet as clamps, where someone's like, "Oh, I bet that would you know help out in this project." But there's not a lot um, technique-wise to people who are already, you know, on their way making things. Like I'm talking to the person who's like, hey, I've never used a chop saw before. It's like, well, I didn't either until I made this table. Like <laughs> so, so go for it. Why not? You can. So you're saying that 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 your that your your audience that you're referring to are, are folks that are starting off is what you're saying? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't feel like I have a particular focus, but when people ask like, you know, who's your target audience? I say, you know, just people who don't know what they're doing or okay. just want to be entertained for a minute. Okay. Well, okay. So very important just, and I'm sure you know this, um, but okay. So that may help and, and motivate and inspire f folks that are starting off. And, oh, if she just clamps it with her foot and she just goes over and she's, you know, um, contorted and stuff. Oh, okay. You know, and I could drill that, but at the same time, you would be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't, at how many people, um, like like Chad. Chad, thank you so much for for the super chat. Man crafting. If you don't know who he is, thank you, you don't you don't wrong. Oh, either. I know Chad. He's, he's man crafting. I'm sorry, <laughs> man crafting. Um, it also a, a lot of makers. Um, and, and I talk a lot to a lot of makers uh, behind the scenes a lot, like all the time, um, all the time. Um, and they will bring up, you know, among many people, but you'll, you'll come up as well, um, that they get inspired. Because of all those things that I said in the beginning as well, um, when you frame something that you weren't intending to frame it in that fashion, you know, setting it up in that fashion. Although I, I would say that that you are totally aware of what you're doing. <laughs> I love how you're like allegedly. <laughs> yeah, allegedly, but it is allegedly. You didn't even think about it. Yeah, we're we're this is the court of public opinion here. Uh, where's the gavel? <laughs> um, you, you inspire them because they you get to think. To me, the best thing is you get to think. You know, outside of the standard. You know frame of thinking the box um so so yeah so you you do it for for the audience is that but there, there's people that are pros at what they do and it refreshes their brain to look at something in a new way and inspires them to go off and do their thing how do you what do you think about that i think that's true i i think also i mean as i feel it kind of sounds odd but um 
to see someone who you feel is like very different from you just as a person doing something in the same realm that you do like you know maybe we both make a bookshelf and they're totally different styles totally different skill levels but i feel like when you see someone who just feels so different from you on a personal level doing the same types of things i feel like you look at it differently whereas you know if if i if there's like a girl next to me who looks exactly like me and built a completely different bookshelf it as much as if like you did it because i feel like you and i look very different <laughs> it's probably the beard i just shaved mine off but i feel like oh who's this person who's you also never doing done things that. that i'm doing you should I never know, shave it's the just beard like, off. you know i totally lost my street cred i'm like bummed about it but you know we'll see where this takes me uh, but you know i i think that like the more the more you see differences between you and the person who also made a table or a bookcase the more it makes you look at it and think oh that's interesting they did it this way um instead of just being like oh yeah that person who's just like me they did something i don't know i didn't really pay attention because why would i i don't know it's just kind of an odd little thought that i had about how we look at things differently based on the person who made them and sometimes that's not a great thing but i think that more often than not it's just it just it, it adds a little bit of flavor because it makes you look more closely at things. Totally. Maybe. Awesome. No, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the 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 insight. Um, Ray Pena, my my buddy, my pal, thank you so much, man. Big hug. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, definitely gonna check out Ray's latest video about that magnesium fire. That was a cool video to watch. Have you have you seen Ray Ray Pena's Ray Makes um, channel? Jesse, I haven't. So I'm, I'm hoping that a link is going to be posted there, so I can. Yes, yeah, I, I did post one. Yeah, he, he's he's fantastic. He's brilliant on yeah. on monstrous scales. Mm -hmm. uh, right, we've got a couple of questions. Uh, got one from uh, Man Grafton. He said he wants to know: Do you have your hotel arrangements for Maker Central yet? I do. I have my plane ticket. I have my hotel room. I'm going to the UK, Birmingham. <laughs> Birmingham. I'm so excited. Yeah. Birmingham. And you can pronounce it right as well. Yeah, I got the general idea. <laughs> Birmingham. You're, gonna, you're picking with the locals. Yeah. Yeah, I'm super excited though because I've I've been to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been uh, I've been to Europe a few times, but I've never spent any time anywhere in the UK. So nice. I'm pretty stoked. Nice. Uh, and Peter Brown, who's actually gone off to dip some mic in resin, probably at this moment in time. Um, he actually asked a question a bit earlier on, but I'll ask the question anyway in case he watches the video back. He said, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll chat about it uh, at, at Maker Central. <laughs> yes. So I'll be there. He says, I'm doing the math. He says, uh, you're not old enough for all of these years. How many jobs did you do at once? Uh, from the time I was 12 till the time I was maybe 30, I never had less than one job at a time. Or sorry, less than two jobs at a time. I didn't say that right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So there was there was a lot of overlap. My sister added it all up one time and came up to thirty nine years of work experience. So. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you to a skewed view, three D. Thank you, buddy. Um, OJ's Woodworking Crafts says, "What projects are coming up for our Jessup?" Well, um, two very important projects. I need to make a bed and I need to make a desk. Right now I'm sitting on the floor in the corner, as you can see, and my mattress, which I do have a mattress now, so that's a big improvement, is right on the floor next to me. <laughs> we moved into this zero furniture, so we're slowly getting things built. Yeah, so a, a bed and a desk are, are in the very near future. Nice. Uh, that's it for the time being, Eloy. Do you want me to quickly run through 
Uh, who's that there? Yes. I no. do. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right. So we've got uh, John from Be Happy Woodworking and Honeybees, Jim Bashirs, uh, Zach from Southern Ginger Woodshop uh, Workshop. Sorry. Um, a skewed view. Uh, Bernie Solo from Works by Solo. Tom Spillaney. Ray Makes, which is obviously Ray Pena. Um, OJ's Woodworking Grass. Eloy, you're out there. Berkey's out there. Havi's out there. Uh, who else is out there? Uh, Julian Martinez is out there. Man crafting. Mark Lindsay CNC. Sterling's out there. Uh, I'm out there. Uh, Askew Views, I've said that one. Jake Thompson's out there. Free Dot Spoon is out there. Gibbs out there. Who else? Anna B. Uh, let's keep scrolling up. Uh, oh, uh, Portal Woodworks is out there. They were all talking about um, Waffle House a minute ago. It was making me jealous. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, that's about it for the time being, I, I think. Okay. So, all right. All right, so so let's go into Heath knuckles has just turned up sorry oh i'm sorry was that heath knuckles that was heath knuckles the heath knuckles the heath knuckles yeah the heath knuckles it could be bobby duke though but it looks like heath knuckles <laughs> <laughs> um so i want to i want to ask when you started doing the youtube you know the channel how did you get into the social media and just your thoughts you know i know that that your your brother um has a successful channel and and, and whatnot w was this connected to that at all or you just decide i mean tell us a little bit about that inform us uh, about that okay so about now maybe five ooh, six years ago seven years ago, I don't know, a number of years ago, um, Ben came to visit, he came from Boston, came to visit Santa Barbara where I was living. And we went out to dinner and, and um, I was like, hey, you know, like, do you still like what you're doing? You like being an architect? And he was like, well, you know, I wanna, I wanna start making things myself. Like I'm tired of drawing the pictures and having someone else make it. And I was like, okay, well, that's cool. And he's like, so I'm, I'm gonna figure that out. So like a year after that, I went to go visit him in Boston. And he was like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. I'm like, yay, my brother loves me. He goes, I need your help. Cool. So he was having me cut wine bottles in half, sand the edges, peel off the labels. And he was making his first video. His, um, and that was the, the wine bottles with the copper spiral, like the hanging gardens. It turned out that was going to be his very, very first video. It just so happened that I was in Boston visiting when he made that. So I actually helped him make his first video. And uh, so <laughs> I can hear Mike doing voiceover in the other room, sorry. <laughs> um, so I was there for the first video and he was like, okay, I bought this piece of land. I'm going to make a three-story apartment building on it. When it's finished, why don't you move to Boston and work for me? And I said, okay. So. Two years later, he calls me up and he's like, hey, the apartments are going to be finished like in a couple months. Do you still want to move to Boston? I was like, sure. So I packed up my car and I drove us to the other. And uh, I started working for Ben with the idea that I would be working behind the scenes, maybe doing some standing because I'm one of the three people in the world who enjoys it. Um, you know, editing, doing all the stuff that's not on camera because frankly, uh, the last thing I ever want to do in life is be on video camera. And uh, so after I was helping him for about a month, he goes, so what do you want your channel to be called? And I was like, no, I don't, no, thank you. He goes, no, you, you need to start your own channel. I was like, well, I, I really don't want to. And he's like, that's part of your job. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I totally got bullied into doing it, which is good. I'm glad he did. He pushes me to do the things that I'm very uncomfortable doing but I'm fine doing it. I'm just, you know, change is scary. Um, so I had no that I was going to be doing this three years ago. 
like not, e not even a clue. Um, and I just started. <laughs> it's like, it was no like, oh, I always wanted to do this. No, I never even thought about it. I just started doing it one day. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of random. I feel like it's it's the antithesis of how everyone else gets into it. Um, but that's 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 what I'm doing. Well, yeah, yeah li life life is is a river, and you know sometimes you wash up on on one shore on one or sometimes on the other. And it's totally, I feel, I mean, I think that that's a pretty safe bet to, to state that like that, you know, you, you never know. I think right? so. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I can yeah, hear, and, and, I can also you know, hear the, I just, the voices on, on, in the other room. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's so loud. I mean, you know, you can he's put the totally microphone. Whispering. Oh, really? <laughs> it's. No, well, go he's ahead. Loud. You're going to say something. <laughs> go ahead. Is, is that. It's that youthful energy that he has. Oh my gosh, he's just like go 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 all the time. It's great, but you know, loud. <laughs> um, now I kind of forgot what I was saying. So, well, so um, now that you have your channel you, and living in this house, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, just real quick. I just want to say it's so funny living in this house because okay, so um, my two brothers, Nate and Ben and Mike and me. And so we started calling it the frat house because it totally feels like a very creative frat house. Like every room has projects going on. There are cameras on tripods standing in every corner. There's like SD cards just strewn all over the place. And there's just materials and tools as far as the eye can see. But uh, it's it's been pretty funny. We've been here three weeks now and it's, it's been quite a trip. <laughs> so those those photos from out in the desert, it's in that area. Yeah, so that's just like 10 minutes away is the park entrance. And so, um, you know, we're working and Nate goes, my oldest brother, Nate, he goes, what if we like finish up real quick and then pack up and we'll just go watch sunset from the park? That's a great idea. So we got our stuff done, put it all away and drove out to the park and we're there for like 20 minutes of this gorgeous sunset. We scrambled up all the rocks and... It's really cool. Yeah, it's a good place to be. Nice. Um, I visited. Uh, how close are you to Palm Springs? Palm Springs, I think, is maybe I don't know, forty-five minutes away. I want to yeah. say. Yeah. So, it's it's pretty close. I well, I mean, with traffic, it's like ten hours away. But oh, did yeah. you? Okay. Nice. Yeah. It's a nice area. JP, what are they saying out there? Uh, not too much. They're kind of talking amongst themselves at the moment. Um, they yeah, uh, they're kind of they're fanboying over Heath as well. Oh, fan fanboying over over Heath. Uh, yeah, uh, Ray well Kenya. Said, Ray Kenya started off as a architect as well, so he said that it might be a thing. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I can understand it because, you know, you have to be so creative and, and have to and understand, you know, so many ins and outs of the way that things go together. But then the amount of time that you get to spend actually creating something solid is very minimal. And uh, I mean, I don't know, for, for me, the idea of being an architect is terrible because I don't plan and I can't figure things out. I just have to build. So it's like the farthest thing from whatever from what I could do personally. So lots of respect, but I could never do that. <laughs> and how about your gear, like uh, the cameras and stuff? A lot of people use like I, I like to use the wide angle, you know, cameras. You know, I, I like that that fisheye inverted fish. Uh, mm -hmm. What what do you use for recording? Um, I just have a little. It's a tiny little Sony with the little flap out window. I don't even know what it's called. That's how into tech I am. Um, but it's just like it's a total consumer handheld video is camera. It like, it's like, it like I think this? it's like four hundred bucks. Or is it another? Um, one? No, it's it's like um, like it. Uh, let me think of what it's called. It's like this big. Yeah, something like that. But it's just like this little chunk, and it's got the little arm that flaps out, so you can see the you know the little viewfinder and. Um, 
I, apparently there are things you can do with it, like adjust the color, but all I do is hit record and stop. That's right. literally all I do. Um, because if I try to get too fancy, then it gets just very confusing and I don't ever want to have to change anything on it. I just want to hit record because sometimes I can't even remember to do that, which is very upsetting. So what's, what's going right on? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was, I wasn't saying anything. What's going on with the next build? Do you, any, is it something you can say uh, or, or have you planned it out yet or you have nothing? What's, what's going on with that? Well, I just finished like at like 4.15 today. Um, I just finished making a little outdoor sofa. So I did a project last week that was um, an outdoor um, screen for a movie projector. And so I did that and Ben was like, well, you should really have a chair to go with it. So why don't you make a chair? So I was like, okay, so I'll make some sort of little outdoor chair. And that the chair came out, I think, pretty cool, especially since... Um, it was one of those things where it's like, I have one day to figure out, start to finish how to do something when usually it takes me like a year. Um, but uh, so I just was like, okay, I can do this. I'm just gonna get it all planned out. And that didn't work. So I just put a bunch of two by fours on the ground in different directions and then made some cuts I'm like this works. So the chair came out in a, in, you know, in a great way for me. And so I decided, well, I could make that into a second video where I do the projector screen and then like, hey, if you like that chair, watch this video. And so I made um, a two seater little couch that matches it. So now it's a set. So I just finished that this afternoon Nice. before coming here. And you had white yeah. paint on your on your arm. So you painted a little bit of it or Yes, no? I, I was painting, <laughs> I painted the whole thing. And we have a couple my hands of a little bit. I washed most of it out. <laughs> I know I always have paint right here because it's when I'm like reaching across it always ends up just right there and apparently I never wash my forearms because it always just stays there. JP? Gross. Did you yeah. just write that? What's that? Yeah, I've just written it. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh right. Uh Ragtie said um Hi Ragtie. <laughs> yeah, he's the man. Uh, he says, uh, what was your favorite Friday spotlight that you didn't get to do? Oh my gosh, yours, obviously. I, I asked Ragtie so long ago and he was so just like, no, no. And we're like, okay, well, we'll revisit just in case. No question. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> it's going to happen. Just like for some other reason, it's totally going to happen someday. Warning yeah. you. Uh, Patrick's workshop would like to know uh, where do you see yourself in five years? Ah, no idea. There we go. <laughs> in December, if you asked me where are you going to be next month, I would have said Boston. But in that time when I was supposed to have gone back to Boston, I somehow moved to Joshua Tree. So, I mean, my life is really weird and it just changes very quickly. So, I have zero idea where I'll physically be or mentally. And as for projects, I hope in five years, I can put out at least another 10 projects. Yeah. It's probably about we'll the same see. as me. Um, I'll race you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Julian Martinez would like to know, is your whole family uh, a free spirit like you? Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, we're all a bunch of weirdos. And um, people will ask, you know, like, oh, who's the black sheep in your family? I'm like, we all are, no question. Like, everyone is an outsider to the other three kids or five as a family unit. Like, each one of us is just, like, on the outside for a different reason. Mm. But, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, one, one, one of the things I love is the fact that Ben's got a ruler on his arm. I know, I right? That's, that's such a I great was, idea. We were supposed to get our tattoos together. He flew me. I drove from Boston all the way out. I was on my way home. I stopped in Vegas overnight, flew the next morning back to New York for 24 hours to get tattooed with Ben at, and then fly back. And Ben's tattoo took so long that the guy never got around to doing mine. <laughs> oh, no. So as you can see, all I got is white paint and, and a couple of hair bands. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to but, get uh, a rose cone or something like that. 
just to commemorate you Jesse. should you should the, when I, just when like I right on your I neck done. right here one it's of the like first things I've done when I got to Walmart was put a road cone on my head. I remember yeah. your 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 Walmart trip. It was it was pretty magical. Yeah. It was pretty magical. Yeah. First thing I saw was Walmart people. Yes. <laughs> they do exist. <laughs> they That's do true. indeed. Yeah. It's funny because we don't have Walmart over here, yet they're everywhere. What do you have that's Walmart like? Well, we've got a company called Asda, which is owned by Walmart. Interesting. And uh, do you know they uh, recently rebranded so that it's Walmart and not Wall Dash Mart, which everyone forgot that that's what it was, anyways. But they uh, rebranded, so it's official. Uh, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Did not know that. I'm so full of information. <laughs> yeah. Did not know that. But uh, yeah, I um, mean, obviously we've got the pound lands and all that lot, which you're gonna have to have a look at when you come over. That's gonna be yes. fun. So are, I expect the full tour. Are, are you guys gonna meet up over there? Because I know that um, that makers are making all sorts of plants and stuff. Um, I mean, will you come across yeah. each other or no? Yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to actually be there um, a few days after. I was talking to um, Alex Al's Hack Shack, yep. and he and Steve, whose last name I can't remember right now, but House. he's Moonshine Metalworks. House. House. That was it. I'm like, I'm like, it's like castle or something. Mansion. Um, so they're taking me down to see the forge that he works at, so I'm super stoked about that. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited. I'm going to be there for a few days after the, um, after the event itself. And the event is going to be madness. I'm like, there are so many people I want to see. I, I feel like when I see the Red Smith in real life, that I'm going to burst into tears. <laughs> like, I'm so excited <laughs> to see him. I could have seen about <laughs> it's like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think I'm, I think I'm like, because you know, I've, I've. I've I've already met Jamie, so I feel like, okay, that's like one one person. I was like, okay, I met him. I'm cool now. So now it's the Red Smith. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what do you know what what when I first met JP over in the group, you know do, do you know the, the story of what, what he did for me? Just I, I feel like this is either gonna be really great or just really frightening. So so you don't no no either not what I wanna hear. So, okay, good. I want to. So hear. briefly, I'll, I'll say. Um, so we had met. We were hanging out in this net, and he found out that I'm a huge Beatles fan, and I I, I, I love the Beatles, you know, uh, very much. As you should. And mm -hmm. he, I know it's like, uh, and so he said, Eloy, I am going to go to Abbey Road just for you, walk around, walk in, and and film it, and 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 all that. I was like. Okay, cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, like that would be awesome. But I'm not gonna, you know. You yeah. Know, oh, of course you hold, are. Cool. Thanks. Hold him to it, right? So one morning he couldn't find me, and he was at Abbey Road doing a live Facebook. He wrote my name in front of Abbey Road, filmed it live for everybody to see, took pictures and everything. What a trip! Because I like. I love the Beatles, right? I play guitar and write songs and done it for years. And he does that. It was like, he became my best friend forever, even though he's a pain in the butt, but forever. <laughs> like for he is our pain in the butt. Yeah. He brought me. So when, when he came to the woodworking show in Atlanta last year, uh, he was like, Oh, what should I bring you? And I was like, you don't need to bring me anything person who I've never met. Don't be creepy. Um, <laughs> and he's like, no, really like, what do you like? And I was like, well, I, you know, I like, I collect pins and button badges. And he brought me like 50 of them and they were all wrapped with like my name on them. And it was amazing. And I'm really sad because my favorite one that I wore all that day, the, the pin part, well, the, the head fell off. <laughs> so it was just a pin in my clothes. I was so sad. Well, so I'm going to pick that? up another one when I come to visit. I'm not telling oh. because then you'll go and get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm replacing it. Also, I have the other 78 pins that you gave me, and thank you so much. Plus, right. plus, 
the custom t-shirts that he had made yes. yeah, for with, with me, me and, Berkey. and Berkey and himself. And they're amazing. And I love it. I think the, the story behind that was it's Jesse made a table with a, a cone in it, a road cone in it. So there's a pit, there's an edited picture of Berkey's head, which is the guy from Breaking Bad, wearing the road cone on his head and the cone going through the table. With the table attached. <laughs> the table attached to it. It's, it's such a magical t shirt. Whenever I wear it, people are like, oh, look, there's a dog on the table. There's a road cone. Who's this guy? Like, what's going on? <laughs> like, it just go down the list. It's just complete madness. It's glorious. Yeah, it's absolutely glorious. So let me ask you this question. Did you enjoy yourself this evening on the I show? I did. I did very much. Oh, yeah. No, not at all. Yes, of course. <laughs> I did. <laughs> it, it, you, it's funny because I... Hmm. Will you come back and visit us and, and, and let us know what you're going to say? Yeah, of course I will. Awesome. I, if you want me to come back, I will come back. Awesome. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that... Um, like this idea of going on a live video and talking to, well, I've met Jamie, but like you and I have never exchanged more than like a couple sentences in conversation. And this is something where like I have, I have a lot of anxiety and I hate meeting new people because it terrifies me. But the, the amount of support and friendship that I've had from absolutely every person within this community has just been overwhelming and so when you reached out to me even though before that i was looking in our messages and it was like you became friends on this day and it was like hi it was like hey it's like we're friends yay and that was like the extent of our conversation through messages <laughs> um but then when you asked you know do you want to be on this show it's like well yeah of course why wouldn't i because i know that i can come here and just hang out with you guys and chat about things and you know mm. talk about dogs on tables and Berkey and how much we love the Red Smith. So. Yeah, totally. You know, the cool thing about all this is, is that we all have a common thread. Um, no matter what, you know, adventure we're all off on in a, given a, in a particular month, week or year, um, we all create things. Plus we film things. Uh, there's a, a lot of elements involved. And um, there's groups behind the scenes. Uh, and there's a certain spirit to it. Everyone's not the same, obviously. We all have our, our, our you know, different mad moments and stuff. But um, mm -hmm. there's a common thread to us all. Um, and that's the, 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 I think, this is my opinion, is, is the, the wonder of, of a person, you know, saying, I will do this. And they go and do it. And it may seem like such a simple thing, maybe for us, but that spirit of getting up and saying, why not, is 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 a glue that binds us, I think, you know. Yeah. Um, so, well, you know, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just, I'm rambling. Uh, I was just going to say, I think it's so funny, like, you know, when you, when you hang out with people who like to make things, um, the way that you enter a room and, and see any given room, whether it's a store or a house or a hotel or whatever, I feel like all of a sudden everyone's just looking at the furniture and like crawling under tables being like, how is this joined together? This is a cool, you know, like, I like this. It's just, it's so funny. Cause I went, I went somewhere with Ben and Mike and there was a table in the center and we're all like doing this circle around the table, just like running our hand and, and like looking underneath. And I'm like, we're totally those weird people. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it. it's funny because when I went down to Eloy's house, you, the first one of the first things you see when you walk through the door, well, before he had it rearranged, was a welder in his living room. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of look around the room and you see some of the projects that he's actually made, like his famous skull chair was there, and then his comic book box was there, and things de different decorations that he's made videos on. He's sort of like, wow, this is pretty cool, you know. That's awesome. Yeah, having yeah. it, ha seeing everything in real life when it's like, I watched you make that. Like, this is so cool. <laughs> yeah. It adds another dimension to walking into a person's house and being like, hey, I remember your furniture. Like, I've had people 
come up to me at, at woodworking shows and just kind of sidle up people I don't know and I smile at them and they go, hey, I love your staircase. I'm like that seems like such a random thing to anyone but all of us where it's like, yeah, the staircase, you know, everyone knows what my staircase looks like. <laughs> so random, yeah. seemingly, but uh, yeah, we're all connected by our projects. Well, before I hand it over to JP and, and wrap it up, I just want to mention that um, thanks to Makers Media Network, uh, that's that was started by Steve Nealon, and he also heads up Harneal Media. If you guys are makers and are looking to you know, make your own website and are thinking about that, well, Harneal Media um, does that, right? For makers specifically. And who does he who does he make websites for? Carl Jacobson, Heath Knuckles, and the list goes on. Uh, mine, Chad's Man Crafting. It goes on and on and on. Um, and so I just wanted to shout Steve out. Thank you for all the love. And JP, two for me. Uh, well, mine in the podcast anyway. Uh, I haven't really got much to say. Um, just want to thank everyone again for checking out the, the Queen video that I've done and sharing it around and all that sort of stuff. That's basically about it. Um, and I guess I'll see you next week. All right, JP. Hi, Jessup. Thank you both so much um, for visiting with us. We um, interview people every Tuesday at 8 p.m. And, um, well... We, <laughs> JP, you have you have someone in in mind. I don't know if uh, if you can mention it now, but we'll definitely post on the Facebooks um, the cover art. We always do promo art, and sometimes on Instagram as well, and we mix it up so you can follow our channel. You can go to the links and follow I Jessup. All her links are down there. Jamie Page is mine. Um, Harneal Media as well is there. So thank you all for the love. Uh, oh, by the way, Jesse, is there any shout outs that you want to give before we boogie? Um, yeah, I actually, it's so funny because this, yeah, <laughs> no, I hate everyone right now. Um, no, I was actually, um, I didn't think about it until you said that. And I realized I want to give a shout out to Keith Decent because he is just really killing it right now and good for him. Like, um, Keith is a buddy of mine. And so I can tease him like this when I say like he got that awesome bump in subscribers and then he's like, I should take this more seriously. And the stuff he's putting out is just phenomenal. So hey Keith. Oh, definitely. I'm gonna agree with that. That's a great way to end it because he he rocks. So Yeah. Good way to end it. He's All really right. doing well. So So mm -hmm. all of yeah. you out there Which is great too because it's getting dark in here. <laughs> all right. All, all of you out there, see you next week. Thank you. Take it easy.